I think we are doing really well. We have tackled already two of our pages, two from the four of the pages that we're going to be having. And I think now we're ready to start working on the most interesting page, which is going to be the recipes page where we will going to have these two components. One is going to be for searching and the second one is going to be for the list. And this is probably going to be the most complicated section. So therefore, we're going to take a stab at it. You know, one video at a time where first we're going to set up some kind of structure just for the recipes page. Then we're going to work with a search component, but we're not going to add all the logic right away. We're just going to pretty much have the layout first. The same with the recipe list. We're going to have a look why I'm using certain type of data and what is the reason for that. And then we're going to deal with single page. And then I think we're going to come back and start working with an Ajax requests when we're actually making Ajax requests to a food to four. All right. So let's start working, I guess. And I'm going to head over, first of all, to our project. I'm going to close the app CSS because I can officially say that we are done with app CSS. We're not going to use it anymore, at least in this project. And then we're going to say headers also can go. We don't need it as well as the default JS is gone. And then the home JS also is not going to be necessary. The nav bar JS is pretty much done as well. And now let me see in the folder structure. What do I have? Well, I have the components. So why don't I create three components that we're also going to finish everything that we're working with components. So let's say first one is going to be for the search. That's going to be responsible for search functionality. So I'm going to say search JS. And in this case, we already know the drill where we're just creating a class based component. I'm going to say hello from search. I would also want to make two more. So one is going to be search list. So a new file search list JS. That is going to be, or you know what? Let's do a recipe list. My apologies if somebody already saved it, but let's say a recipe list JS. And again, we're going to do the same thing. Hello from recipe list. And you know what? The last one is going to be the actual recipe. And as you can see already, we are pretty much doing the same things we have done before, where we're going to have some kind of list. That's going to be responsible for rendering the whole list. And then each and every recipe is going to be separate component. And that's the reason why we're creating these components. I'm going to say recipe JS again, the same thing. I'm just going to have a hello from recipe. That's pretty much going to be our setup. And you know what? Right away within the recipe list, I can just import the recipe. Since the recipe is not going to be used in the recipes page, the recipe list is going to be used there, but we are going to use the recipe in the recipe list. And we're going to say that we're going to be looking for recipe, the component, which is going to be in the same folder, by the way. So we can just say from then forward slash. And then we're going to say that we are looking for the recipe. And you know what? We might as well right away can render it. This is going to be our list and maybe right after the list. Let's also add our recipe. So this is going to be rendered and then I can close them for now. The search and the recipe list. But you know what? No, why don't we just keep it open here on a tab? I don't think it makes much of a difference since we're going to have only four tabs open anyway. So yeah, let's just leave it there on top. At least I will. And then I'm going to close the source or known the components. Uh, I can also close the images and within the pages, I'm going to be looking for recipes. And that's the page that we're going to be working on. And like I said, this video, I would like to spend on pretty much doing our setup where we're going to come up with the structure for this page. And then we're going to start working in more detail with each and every component, because like I said, this is going to be probably the most complicated uh, page for sure that we're going to be creating. So let's say import. So first of all, I'm going to be looking for a recipe list. Remember, that was the component from and now I'm looking for the components. In my case, components, then they're also going to be recipe list. I'm going to copy and paste it. And here we're going to select two cursors and we're going to write that the next one is going to be search component. So these are going to be my two components and we right away can render them. We can say that 
for now, we can create some kind of container parent container. And you know what? In this case, maybe let's do the react fragment. I'm just gonna say, okay, so we have the react fragment, then we have the closing for the react fragment, and then within the react fragment, we're gonna have two things. So we're gonna have a recipe list, recipe list, as well as we're gonna have the search. And you know what? We're gonna place the search on top. So why don't we do it like this? We're gonna place the search on the top, and why don't we open up also the recipes page? So that way we can see everything is happening. So we have our nav bar, then hello from search, which is our component, and hello from recipe list, which has, by the way, the recipe. Okay. And now I'd like to also import the recipe data. And again, the reason why I'm using this recipe data is very simple. Because whenever we're going to be working with a food for work, this is the response that we're going to be getting. And I'm going to cover this in a little bit more detail, obviously, as we're going to start working on this list, because I think this is just going to make more sense as we start working with the component. But for now, I would just like to import the data and let me again undo it. And the data was, remember, in the data folder. And then we had an option of temporary details or temporary list. So within this list, you see that we have recipe data. So this is the information that I would like to import. And again, once we're going to start working with the list, I'm going to go over why actually I have these properties with these values. Again, this is just going to make sense since that way we can replace our whole application by a few lines of code. And then we're going to be getting the Ajax requests instead of getting our data locally, just so we would save it on our actual API calls. Because that's the only reason if they wouldn't be limiting those calls so drastically, I think we could easily work right away with Ajax. But I guess this is going to be the best next thing or next best thing. And now we go back to recipes. We're going to import. Now the variable was recipe data, recipe data. And if you paid attention, then this is going to be named import. So we have recipe data, recipe data. And this is going to be from the data folder. Again, we're going to leave the folder. We're going to go to data and then we're going to be looking for not temp details, but temporary list and obviously temporary because we're just going to work before we start using the Ajax request. And then for this component, we're going to first set up the constructor and you'll see later on as we're doing the searches, why we're doing this for now, just follow along. And let's just say that we need to use also super. So we're going to be using the constructor. And then within the actual constructor, for now, we're going to have nothing in there. So probably if you will going to have your console open, this is going to complain that this is unnecessary constructor. But you'll see later on why we're doing this. So for now, we'll just have the constructor. And that is all working really well. And then we also could set up the state. And within the state, let me just set up recipes. And I'm going to set this equal to the recipe data. So this is going to be the array that I'm going to be getting back. Then also, since you can see that we're all going to have the search and for the search, we already know that we would need two things for the input. And that would be one, the value that's going to be holding a value of the current thing that we're typing, as well as we're going to have the two methods. One is going to be for the on change and then the second one is going to be on submit. So I'm just going to right away create these variables. And since I'm going to pass them down anyway, when I say variables, obviously properties on the object of the state. But then I'm going to say search, and this is just going to be an empty string that's going to be holding the value. And we also can, yeah, I think that's going to be it. So I think we can just do the search and in the state, we're going to be good to go. And then while we're still here, why don't we create these two methods since we will going to be passing them now? So let's say first one is going to be handle change and they'll change. And we should already know the drill where we have the option for getting the event object. So in this case, we're just going to say event since we're going to be looking for event target value. And once we have our handle change created, why don't we right away say what we're going to be doing? Because again, these are just basics that we have covered already many times. We're all going to use this dot set state, and then we're going to pass the object. And within the object, every time we're going to be typing within the handle change, we're just going to be setting the value in the state of search. So I'm going to say search event target value. Again, we have covered this quite few many times. So I think we should be fine. And also I'm going to right away create the handle submit. 
However, this method, we're not going to write anything. I was going to say, okay, so there will going to be submit method. This will going to get event again. And then we're going to say that for now, we just want to prevent the default, which will going to refresh the page each and every time when we're pressing. So we're just going to say prevent default. That's going to be the method we're going to be running. And last but not least, I would like to pass this down into both of the components. So I'm going to have the search as well as I'm going to have the recipe list for the recipe list. This is going to be easy. So we're going to be getting the recipes from the state. So I'm going to say, okay, so recipes with this dot state recipes, that's where we're getting the recipes. And for search, it's going to be a little bit more since we would want the search. That's the actual prop that we're going to have. And this is going to be equal for the value from the state. So again, we're going to say this dot state search. That's the value in the state. Since obviously this is again going to be holding the value of our input. And then we're going to have two methods. Now one is going to be handle change. This is going to be equal to a method of handle change. So this dot, this dot, not component will mount. I'm going to say this dot handle change. That's going to be our first one. And then we're going to have handle submit. So handle, and by the way, the proper name for the prop would be handle change. Handle submit is also going to be equal to this dot handle. And then we're going to be looking for submit. I will going to save it. And for now, we obviously cannot see anything, but we have successfully created our components. We have passed it down, whatever we were going to be looking from the state of the recipes JS page. And I think we can start working with a search. And then later on, we're going to start dealing with the recipes list.